Hello and welcome to the Brooklyn Technical High School Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us. We're really excited that you're here to learn about six great schools tonight. I have a few housekeeping announcements as we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and your microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. That's why that Q&A button is so important. You can direct a question to a specific school by including your name with your question, or you can leave a question for any and all of our representatives to answer about their programs. This is just one of many different sessions that are happening today, Monday, but also on Tuesday and Wednesday of this week. We hope that you sign up for more sessions so that you can learn about more awesome schools. This presentation, like all of the presentations, is being recorded. They will all be available within about a week's time at the same website where you can register for more sessions and where you registered initially, strivescan.com slash Brooklyn Tech. I'm now really excited to welcome and turn it over to our first presenter. We're gonna be hearing uh, from the University of Glasgow. All right, thank you so much. Go ahead share my screen. I hope I'm having a great day. It's actually warm in Chicago. That's where home is for me. Um, I hope we all can see. My name is Jay Shamlin. I'm at the University of Glasgow. Sorry, I'm with Scottish accent, but um, I hope they, got, they hired me, so I know a lot about the university. I'm based in Chicago, Illinois, and I recruit students from the Northeast and Midwest parts of the United States. So without further ado, let's hop right on in. The University of Glasgow was founded in 1451. We are one of the ancient Scottish universities, and we are the fourth oldest English-speaking university in the entire world behind Oxford, Cambridge, and St. Andrews. We have about 33,000 students from over 140 different countries, but we're only 2% U.S. We love that 33,000 students, maybe 800 students from the United States. So I always ask students who are looking to go abroad, the first thing they should think about is, you know, how American do you really want to feel when you're overseas? We're the 14th in the UK. We're actually 77th in the QS World Rankings for 2021, 29th most international university in the world. And I'll keep talking about some more accolades. Glasgow or Scotland was sort of the most beautiful country in the world in 2019. This is actually Loch Lomond, which is one of the, a lock is a lake, just that you all know. And it's one of the lakes that's about um, 30, to 45, 30, 30 to 40 minutes from school. And what's great is that many people think of Scotland as these beautiful countryside, picturesque views, these gorgeous hill walks that you can see here. But we are located in Glasgow, which is the largest city in Scotland at about a million people. Um, many people think Edinburgh is the largest city, but no, Glasgow is at about a million people. And Scotland is a country of about 5 million people. So, and I think Manhattan alone is like 8 million. So to give you guys an idea that, um, yeah, it's going to be a small country where there's more sheep than there are people, but you're going to be in the largest city in Glasgow. Um, You'll see here we're a UNESCO city of music, which means we have over 200 live music events a week pre-COVID. Um, it could be something as simple as, you know, a, a string quartet at a pub or something as big as Beyonce is coming to town and she's going to perform the Hydro, which is the green colored building on the screen, which is the second busiest arena in the entire world. Also, there's also there's over 90 different parks throughout Glasgow, and actually Glasgow stands for Deer Green Place. So, you know, although we're a city, there's tons and tons of greenery and nice place, uh, pockets to hang out in around the city. We're located in Glasgow's West End, and I actually always describe Glasgow as like Brooklyn. I always say, um, you know, it's, it's very, has a cool art scene, a very, uh, there's a cool grunge and music punk scene there going on, very artsy vibes. Um, but what I love about Glasgow, my favorite part is the West End is going to be uh, Ashton Lane, which is the photo on the screen. And this is a pedestrian only pedestrian only street, as you can see. And what's great is that it's lined with restaurants and shops and pubs and a movie theater. And this is literally right behind our geology building. So it is really nice uh, in terms of convenience to be able to kind of after class, grab a pint with a mate and just kind of hang out and just be in Glasgow and just enjoying life. Now, as you see, beautiful aerial shot of campus and the first building that pops up is going to be the main building. Fun fact, that is the clock tower used in the movie Harry Potter, and you can go up it when it's not windy in Scotland. Problem is that it's windy almost all the time. Um, but in this building, you'll have our school of business, the Adams School of Business. Uh, we have our uh, College of Arts in there, College of Law in there, tons of lecture halls, professor's offices, a coffee shop. Basically, I'm getting at that you will go in this building at some point, even if your major is not in there. A library, the library, as you know, but what's nice about this is on the 13th floor, we have special collections, which houses some of the Shakespeare's manuscripts currently and some other really rare, important items that students are allowed to use for research purposes. 
but you all spend a lot of time in the Fraser building. Just think of that as your student union, your one-stop shop. You know, on the fourth floor is going to be one of our dining hall options. On um, the third floor is going to be our Office of International Student Support and Visa Support, along with our finance office. So anything with paper, money, and checks is on that third floor. And then the second floor is going to be our bookstore and also going to be uh, the doctor's office. So I always tell students, if you have a question or you're not feeling well or anything at all, you'll spend a lot of time in the Fraser building. Think of it as a student union. Now, at the University of Glasgow, we have over 500 different program combinations for majors or double majors. Um, the only thing that we do not offer, I would say, is any performing arts or visual arts space. So if you want to go into acting, singing, dancing, painting, ceramics, you'll want to go to the Glasgow School of Art. But pretty much everything else, we probably have at University of Glasgow. Now, you probably heard in the UK that, um, first of all, in England, Wales, and Northern Ireland, those are three-year institutions. Scotland is a four-year institution. And as you see here, it's nice that we give you three areas to study during your first year to kind of test the waters between. And then in year two, you take down two areas. And then years three and four is going to be only your major subject. So, yes, you do have an idea what it is that you want to study when you go to the UK. But Glasgow, or Scotland schools in Glasgow gives you an extra year as opposed to the rest of the United Kingdom. In terms of entry requirements, we're looking for at least a, uh, a combination of a 1280 SAT or 27 ACT, and then two AP exams of a four or above and relevant field to your program. Um, that is the most sure way to get into the university. What's great is that it's pretty black and white with that way. But if you aren't able to get into any of the exams, I'm hoping some of you juniors will be able to get into the exams coming up this fall. Um, we are a test optional university, which means you have to have at least a 3.5 unweighted GPA, and then also you require dual enrollment or AP coursework or honors level coursework in your field of study that you're planning to go into. I will say, though, that in terms of uh, science programs for engineering and if you want to go to medicine or anything at all, we will require the AP exams or and the SAT and ACT. So we're test optional for some of the more College of Arts or College of Social Science programs. And then finally here, we do, um, the tuition starts at about actually $27,000 a year. The added the board is about $10,000 a year. So again, we're not going to beat the price of a state school, but if you're looking at some of the more smaller selective liberal arts schools, we tend to be more, a bit more competitively priced. We do offer a undergraduate excellence scholarship, which is 5,000 pounds, which will be automatically considered for when you do apply to the University of Glasgow. Um, that's about $1,600 US off of tuition. And then finally, there are three US-based officers here in the United States. Jason works with students in the Southeast Central region. Ashley works with students in the West Coast. And I work with students in the Northeast and Midwest. So please, I ask you guys to scan the QR code in the bottom of the screen if you wanted to get more information about the University of Glasgow. But that's all. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jay, for starting us off today and presenting on the University of Glasgow. All right, we're moving on to our second school. We're going to be hearing from University College Cork. All right, thank you very much. Um, hi, everybody. Um, my name is Maggie Cardosi, and I represent University College Cork in Ireland, um, although I'm based um, here in the New York City area. Um, I'm really happy to be sharing a bit with you about Ireland um, because I liked it like studying there so much I did it twice so I'm excited to share a little bit with you about a place that um, I definitely consider my second home and I hope you will call home someday as well. Um, so first off a little bit about Cork City. Um, so we are located, UCC is located in Cork which is along the southern coast of Ireland which if you're not familiar is a small country um, on the western periphery of Europe um, about the size of the state of Indiana so relatively small country and Cork is a second Second largest city in Ireland. And like I said, we're along the southern coast. Um, a recent Lonely Planet a review said everything good in Ireland can be found in Cork, um, which is a statement I cannot argue with. Um, Cork and Ireland have a reputation for being safe, friendly, and welcoming. And Cork itself is um, a very walkable city, which to um, us New Yorkers, I think is very important. Um, there's also no shortage of things um, that will keep you busy in Cork. So the city itself, um, even though we've got about 200,000 people to Together, so relatively small city, we're over indexed when it comes to culture. So there are dozens of museums, um, concert venues, um, art galleries, um, theaters, restaurants, um, cafes, bars, and all of that to keep you busy while you're in Cork. But the county of Cork is also home to some of Ireland's most beautiful landscapes, beaches, and heritage sites. So um, a lot to do and very easy to get around Ireland from Cork, either by train or by bus. Um, but you can also get to points in Europe and beyond via the Cork International Airport, which is about four miles from our campus. 
And speaking of our campus, there we are right there. Uh, we were founded in 1845 and we're a really nice combination of both the historic and the modern. Um, we're about a 15 minute walk from the heart of Cork City. So everything you need is going to be right there um, or very easy to, to walk to. Um, our 130 undergraduate degree programs um, are, world, are internationally recognized and the university is ranked in the top 2% of universities worldwide. So your degree is gonna mean something wherever you decide to go after graduation. Um, our 22,000 students come from about 104 different countries. So you're not only gonna be studying with students from Ireland, but also also students from around the world. Um, we're number one for the student experience in Ireland and we have over 200 different support services and activities to make sure that you're looked after both in mind and body and that um, you are joining um, you know, as many activities as, as you can to make friends, as many friends as possible. We're also very proud to be the world's first green campus, and we are currently number eight in the world for our sustainability practices. So if um, sustainability um, or environmental issues are very important to you, you will be joining a community of like-minded and um, supportive individuals. When it comes to our undergraduate degrees, um, they are either three or four years and they are direct entry honors programs, which means that we don't have general education requirements and you do need to know at least the general area that you would like to be kind of focusing on from the point of application. Our over 100 different programs are spread across um, four different colleges, the College of Arts, Celtic Studies and Social Science, College of Science, Engineering and Food Science, the College of Business and Law and the College of Medicine and Health. Um, we have um, the same amount and the same types of programs that you can expect to find at a large research institution here in the US, but some of our more popular programs would be our joint honors arts degree, anthropology, criminology, forensic chemistry, psychology and computing, applied international geosciences and public health sciences. Um, practical learning is really the cornerstone of our curriculum at UCC. So most of the programs that I've mentioned here would include work placements, field work, um, um, internship, an internship course, or a study abroad opportunity. Um, we're also a leader for industry engagement within Ireland. So up here in the top right corner, I have a sampling of some of the companies that we work with to facilitate those work placements and who would go on to actually hire many of our graduates. Um, and about 94% of our students are employed or in further study within six months of graduation. And we have both a dedicated careers office and a skills center team um, to help you kind of connect with um, employment opportunities or kind of ramp up your skills um, in interviewing your CV and the like. Um, it's also worth noting that um, as a student in Ireland, you get an automatic one year stay back visa to um, stick around in Ireland to seek work after you graduate from an undergraduate program. When it comes to application, um, we accept a direct online application and we do rolling admission from about December 10th every year. The basic elements of your application are going to be your up to date um, high school transcript, two recommendation letters and a 500 word essay detailing why you're interested in studying at UCC. And in terms of entry requirements, we would be looking for a minimum 3.0 3.0 unweighted GPA um, along with, a, with an 1130 SAT. Um, however, um, because of the issue with access to exams this year, we went test flexible for fall 2021. For fall 2022, we're still making a decision, but just kind of watch this space. And of course, you can direct any questions to me. Um, also, if you're enrolled in AP or college level courses, dual enrollment courses, do note that on your application and, and make sure that um, you're aware of any particular subject requirements because some of our more competitive programs may have higher requirements than what's mentioned here. In terms of cost, um, we're pretty competitive um, with out-of-state and private school tuition at about $33,000 per year. We have partial tuition scholarships and you can work part-time. And if you have any other questions, there are my details there. But as they say in Ireland, go or mill maggot. And thank you for listening. Thank you so much, Maggie, for presenting on University College Cork. Our next presentation is going to be University College Dublin. Thanks so much. One moment here. Hi everyone, so thank you so much for attending today. My name is Carly Harward and I am the Northeast representative for University College Dublin based in Dublin, Ireland. I myself am located in the New York area as well. So why Ireland, why Dublin? Ireland is a safe, friendly, and welcoming country. It's been voted world's friendliest country, 10th safest country in the world, 
uh, and the world's most globalized nation as well. It's a smaller country, but incredibly global with people coming from all over the world to study, work, and live. Dublin is Ireland's capital city located on the East Coast. Over 50% of all international students that come to Ireland live in Dublin. And Dublin is a very young and vibrant city. It's also the European Union's headquarter capital with companies such as Google, Facebook, LinkedIn, Airbnb, and more calling Dublin home, which is great for networking and internships for our students. Dublin is a great place to spend your four years. Everything you could want as a, as a student, such as art scene, business hub, great nightlife, travel, but it's not too overwhelming in size. It's easy to navigate. It's a walkable city center and good public transportation service as well. So UCD is ranked the number one university in Ireland by US News and World Report. It's just south of the Dublin city center. So it's about three miles or so from the city center. Very easy to catch a bus and get to the hustle and bustle of the city center in about 20 to 30 minutes, or maybe even just over a 30 minute bike ride from campus. UCD is one of Ireland's oldest universities as well, being founded in 1854. The campus is pretty modern as we move to our Belfield campus in the 1960s. We're one of the largest and most international universities in Ireland, with 29% of our student body being international students. With our campus style research and student population, we feel quite similar to a public research institution here in the US. So our campus has a similar feel to that of maybe a smaller state school in the US. You have the green spaces, the lakes, an active student body, and the campus is consolid consolidated together and has all of the amenities you would be used to in a US institution. So we have different libraries throughout campus dedicated to different academic disciplines, a global center, career support services, student support services, and academic support services, as well as a great gym and the student center. So the student center is the hub of campus activities. It has a drama theater, dance studios, uh, radio pod, pharmacy, barber, Olympic pool, debate chamber, cinema, and it's very active space on campus. It is also home to over 130 clubs and societies where you can find something that best suits your interests. So we have on-campus housing for over 3,000 students, which can be quite unique to that of a European university. Our residence life team is there to support you and build community as well. And we venture to guarantee housing for incoming first year undergraduate international students. All students have their own private bedroom, typically an apartment style accommodation where you're sharing a bathroom, kitchen, a living room uh, with a small group of students. On that side of campus as well, there's a small grocery store, laundry facilities, and a mini gym. And there's also several restaurants throughout campus. So UCD has over 70 undergraduate internationally recognized degree programs. And here you can see an outline of some of the colleges we have on campus. All of the programs would fall into one of these colleges. We have two pathways to a degree at UCD. So we have direct entry, which is set up closer to the European model. It's great for students who know exactly what they want to study. These are highly focused and some programs can be completed in three years, three years while others are four years. If you're not sure what you want to study though, don't worry, we do have the liberal arts and sciences program, which mimics the US model and is similar to coming in undecided. This is a four year program that offers more flexibility. You can take a variety of classes across a year or two before ultimately deciding what path it is that you think would be the best fit for you. It's just important to note that this pathway is not compatible with every major at UCD. There's also two ways to apply to UCD. So we are available on the common application or you can apply directly through our website. The Common App would be the most popular with our US applicants. We have an academically focused application, so most programs will not require a college essay. We encourage you to submit any test scores that you may have though, or plan to take, whether that be AP, ACT, SAT, IB, can only help. We were test flexible in 2021. However, um, we will have our requirements for 2022 uh, later in the summer, and you can always reach out to me directly as well. You can also apply to up to four programs or majors under one application fee. Our application opens on October 1st. We have a priority deadline of December 1st if you're interested in scholarships and a rolling deadline of July 1, but I would always suggest an earlier application because some programs will close before this date. We have a range of scholarships available for international students ranging from 10% to 100% of tuition as well. All in, including tuition and cost of living expenses, UCD averages 40,000 US dollars per year. So it may be a little uh, less expensive than maybe a private school or out of state school in the US. And we also accept US federal aid through the FAFSA. 
So just a little profile of some of our incoming first year students from last year. They came from 28 US states, one US territory, and two Canadian provinces. As you can see, our liberal arts and sciences pathway, pathway was one of our most popular pathways as well, with 24% of our international population coming through that way. And if you have any other questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to me directly. My email's there and I'll also drop it into the chat. Wonderful, thank you so much, Carly, for sharing University College Dublin. All right, we've heard from three great schools. We have three more to go. I just wanted to remind all of our attendees that the Q&A button is your best way to ask questions and to communicate with our representatives today. You can put in a question for any and all of our representatives to answer, or you can direct your question to a specific school by including the school's name in with your question so that the representative will know that you're wanting to um, ask them a little bit more about their program. So please don't hesitate to use that Q&A. All right, so now I'm ready to hand it over to our next school. We'll be hearing from the University of British Columbia. All right, hello everyone. My name's Chris Weber. I'm UBC's regional representative here in New York. So let's jump right in. Um, there's three things I wanna to talk to you about today, uh, which is the academic excellence that you'll find at UBC, the ideal locations and the active learning opportunities. So if we start out with academic excellence, this is a tough one to talk about because you tend to want to quantify it or put a number to it. And, and I know that rankings are not everything at all, but if that is something you care about, we are a top 40 school in the world. A lot of our departments are among the top 20 worldwide. This is all well and good. I'm more interested in two other numbers. Uh, one of these is that we're the number one school in the world for taking urgent action to combat climate change. I like this because it tells you a lot about who we are. We're obsessed with sustainability and we're doing something about it. And the final number I promise is that we're the most international university in North America with over 18,000 international students from 166 countries. So multicultural diversity and sustainability are just in our DNA. They're who we are at UBC. So now let's move on to the location. And before I even talk about UBC, let's just talk about Canada for a second, because there's many reasons international students choose Canada. It could be that we're number one in the world for quality of life. We're a country that really prioritizes uh, health care, you know, mental health and physical health. We invest more in higher education than almost any other country in the world, meaning our university, uh, the cost goes down while the quality goes up. And then finally, if you graduate from a Canadian institution, you get a three-year work permit so you can stay in the country and really build your career and your resume before moving back here or moving anywhere else in the world for that matter. So now let's talk about UBC. Uh, we are in the west of Canada and we actually have two campuses. Now the degree is the same, the subject areas are pretty similar. It's really about the right fit because the experiences are very different. So let's start out with Vancouver. Vancouver is a city of two and a half million people. So it's big enough that you get everything you'd want from a big city, but you also have outdoors adventures. We have beaches, we have mountains, we have forests all within the city. Now our campus in Vancouver sits on the traditional ancestral and unceded territory of the Musqueam people. This is a campus of 45,000 undergraduate students. So it's a big place. Now, once upon a time, I was a student at UBC and I never felt overwhelmed by the size of it. It didn't feel like me in a sea of people. It was more like me and my communities among all the other communities on campus. And this campus is about 25 minutes from downtown Vancouver by bus and buses are free for students because, you know, Canada. So, you know, the city's right there. It's just not in your face at all times. Now, if you go an hour's flight away or about a four hour drive, you get to the city of Kelowna in the Okanagan Valley. Kelowna is a city of about 200,000 people, so it's much smaller than Vancouver. It's a Canadian vacation destination, so it's very laid back. You got beaches, you got mountains, but you also have the most entrepreneurial community in Canada. So it's a good little mix there of forward thinking and, and just chilling. Um, now, our campus here uh, sits on the territory of the Silk Okanagan Nation, and this is a campus of 9,500 undergrads. So it's more mid-size. So you'll have smaller classes. You'll bump into people you know all the time. You're also surrounded by nature, like in Vancouver. You're about 20 minutes from downtown Kelowna. So very different experiences. Now, the final thing I said I'd talk about was active learning. Uh, we're very big fans of getting your hands dirty and really doing rather than just sitting in a classroom. 
And there's many ways you can do this. Uh, one of them is research at the undergraduate level. Uh, you don't have to be a grad student. We have a ton of opportunities for undergrads because we have hundreds of millions of dollars in funding every year. There are thousands of projects and undergrads can even lead their own study teams. So uh, that's a thing to consider. Or maybe if you're not academically inclined that way, you're thinking more about practical, you know, the, the job market later on. We're very big fans of co-op. Now, if you're not familiar with co-op, that's a way of doing work experience where you alternate a semester of work with a semester of study. So you don't have to uh, juggle too much at any one time. Now, 90% of our co-op students get a job offer within a month of graduating because these jobs are real life work experience mentored by someone in the field. And they're in Canada, they're in the US, they're anywhere. They're in all kinds of industries from banking to tech to entertainment, NGOs, government, what, you name it, we, we got it. There's thousands of students on co-op every year at UBC. But maybe this is all very uh, intense and I'm telling you to do research or to work and you just want to have some fun and that's allowed too. We do have the strongest varsity program in Canada. We have the largest intramural sports program in Canada. So any sport, any level of competition, whatever makes sense to you. We also have over 400 student run clubs if you're not necessarily athletically inclined. These can be uh, I don't know, cultural clubs, academic clubs, social justice oriented, or just fun ones like the ski and snowboard club or the mustache club. This is a great way to find your communities and make this larger experience feel a little bit smaller. And then finally, if going to Canada isn't international enough, why not go abroad? We have over 200 study abroad partners where you can work abroad, study abroad, research abroad. So a lot of opportunities to get active learning opportunities. So with this, I think I did talk about all the three things I said I would. Now, if you're thinking of getting outside of New York, maybe going west, there's no reason why we shouldn't be on your list, especially with a friendly Canadian price tag. So if you want to learn more, I will email you, but also you can find us on all the social media. Just look for UBC with the word U, Y-O-U, B-C. Uh, that's about it. I'm going to stop talking now and uh, that's my time. Awesome. Thank you so much, Chris, for sharing UBC with everyone today. All right, we're off to our next school, the IE University. Cora, I can see your screen share is starting. We haven't quite gotten it yet. Cora, I'm not sure if you're able to hear me. We might be having some technical uh, difficulties for AE, but we're gonna work on that. Um, while I'm working on that situation, thanks for everyone's patience. I think we all know what our Zoom life has been like over the last year for sure. So I'm going to work on this. Um, Kathleen from Haverford, quick question. If you are able to come back on screen real quick or check your messages. Hi, Kathleen. Would you be able and ready if you're able to, to present so I can work on solving this situation with Cora? Yes, absolutely. Happy oh, to thank you so much. We, again, like I said, 2020, 2021, whether it's students, all of us professionals, teachers, we've all been in these situations before. Yes, we sure have. Um, well, oh, great. You. Well, I'm really excited to have uh, this time to share a little bit about a place that I love dear. Um, again, my name is Kathleen Abels. I'm the Senior Associate Director of Admission oh. at Haverford College. I am uh, also, I'm working from home, so I always like to share that I have two dogs um, and they might at any point uh, sort of introduce themselves as well. But Haverford is a bit different from uh, many of the wonderful institutions that you've heard from already. Um, we are a small liberal arts and sciences college located in the United States, um, just outside of the city of Philadelphia. So we're just about 1400 students, again, entirely undergraduate and very much this size on purpose. We feel like we're best able to educate our students um, as a result. 
And what's really beautiful about a place like Haverford is that students um, are choosing to come to our campus from all over the United States and also all over the globe and call Haverford home. And we certainly have a very strong tradition of welcoming students from Brooklyn Tech on campus. We're located just outside of the city of Philadelphia, like I said, um, perhaps on my earlier screen, you'd see my favorite Haverford stat. There's a six to one tree to student ratio. Um, Haverford is a nationally recognized arboretum, one of the first planned arboretums in the United States. And what this means is you have all the benefits of being on a beautiful college campus, but you're just about a uh, five, 10 minute walk to two different train lines and then a 15, 20 minute train ride into center city, Philadelphia. Philadelphia is the sixth largest city in the United States, uh, the first world heritage city in the United States. And it's a really amazing um, opportunity for our students to feel like they're, yes, very much part of the Haverford community, but also very much part of the greater Philadelphia community. Philadelphia has many amazing colleges and universities um, in the sort of region and Haverford is part of a larger consortium. So maybe you've heard this term before, if so, great. If you haven't, what this means is that our students have opportunities to take whatever courses they'd like at Haverford, but also at Bryn Mawr College and Swarthmore College, two other fantastic liberal arts and sciences colleges. And if a course isn't offered at Bryn Mawr, Haverford, or Swarthmore, they, students can take those courses at the University of Pennsylvania and any of four of Penn's undergraduate colleges, including the Wharton School of Business. Um, and over 90% of our students will take a class outside of Haverford by the time they graduate. There's free transportation between Haverford and Bryn Mawr and Haverford and Swarthmore. And if you're on financial aid, um, there's a train that will take you to the center of Penn's campus and will cover that cost of your train ticket if you're on financial aid as well. We meet full demonstrated need of all of our students. Um, and we think a lot about sort of equity in terms of experiences. So not only are we interested in paying for your train ticket if you're on financial aid, but also all of our events on Haverford, Bryn Mawr and Swarthmore's campus are cash free. They're free um, of charge for any of our students. We have several dual degree partnerships, which means in four years, you'll graduate with a Bachelor of Arts or a Bachelor of Science from Haverford. And then in just one additional year, you'd graduate with a master's in any of these uh, fields and degrees and certainly happy to answer any specific questions in the Q&A about these programs. They're really just scratching the surface though in terms of what our students go on to do once they graduate. I've said a few times that Haverford is a liberal arts and sciences college, and oftentimes you hear that term liberal arts, right, but that's just a shortening. And here I'll tell you our top 10 most popular majors over the last few years, you'll see that five of the 10 are in the natural sciences. So yes, you can get an amazing education in the social sciences and in the humanities, but you can also get an amazing education in the natural sciences at a liberal arts college. Haverford is one of a handful of institutions in the United States to guarantee undergraduate research. We do that through the senior thesis experience, and this is really one way of articulating the value of student voice. We think you each are capable of doing your own undergraduate research, and we really see that as a culminating moment in your life as a scholar at Haverford. Of course, we don't just throw research on you senior year and say that uh, good luck, right? That would be terrible. It's a part of your entire academic trajectory. And these academic centers are both physical spaces, but also grant making bodies for students to have opportunities to travel uh, to conferences, to present their papers um, all over the globe, to have research opportunities as well. Your life outside of the classroom is really rich and fun as well. 145 clubs and organizations on campus, several Haverford traditions, which I always like to highlight, but really the most important tradition at Haverford is this idea of shared governance. Haverford is a deeply collaborative community. Students are interested in learning from amazing peers who are choosing to call Haverford home from all over the globe. And you're treated as a colleague of everyone on campus. Our students sit on every college-wide committee that makes major decisions. Um, our students are also part of the process of writing and rewriting an honor code, which is both social and academic in nature and entirely student run. And it's not a list of thou shall not, right? It's not like the 10 commandments. Instead, it's really an opportunity for our students to say, what do I need to thrive? How am I interested in being supported by my peers? How do I wanna help lift my peers up? 
This means in four years at Haverford, I never had a proctored exam. I never had anyone ask me what I got on a test or a quiz. And what it really means is that, again, students are interested in celebrating one another. I think our students get sort of a trio of educational experiences. You're gonna get a great education in the liberal arts, learning how to think critically and analyze thoroughly and communicate effectively. You're going to get a great education rooted in research where you will truly become an expert in your field. But because of our honor code, because of the emphasis on ethical leadership and engagement where you've been asked to think how the decisions you make not only impact you, but the people and communities around you, you're going to get a really transformative education and ethical leadership. And so regardless of the communities that you join after Haverford, you'll continue to shape and change and challenge those in the way that you've been a part of that kind of community change at Haverford as well. I really appreciate your time and attention um, and look forward to your questions. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, Kathleen, for sharing Haverford and for jumping in uh, to help me out and our colleague. I'm really excited now that we were able to get Cora back to present on IE University. Like I said before, 2020 and 2021, we've all had those tech moments and we're just so glad you're here. So Cora, I'm going to turn it over to you to share IE with all of us. Hi, thank you so much. And I appreciate, um, you know, you all bearing with me. I'm just getting everything kind of set up and settled uh, once more. So I am back. As soon as I tried to share my screen, my computer decided to freeze. So I'm going to keep fingers crossed that it doesn't happen again. Uh, Jennifer, do you mind just giving me a thumbs up or something if you all can still see it, the presentation okay? Amazing. Perfect. Thank you so much. Good to go. Okay. We can see you, hear you. Perfect. Amazing, okay. <laughs> so hi everyone, uh, my name is Laura Morrison and I'm the Senior Associate Director for North America here representing uh, IE University today. IE University is located in beautiful Spain and I'm actually based in our international office here in New York City. Um, it's one of our more than 30 international offices worldwide. So it allows us to attract students uh, and top talent globally when it comes to students and faculty. And so to, just to kind of jump straight into our studies, uh, you know, all of our undergraduate programs are taught in English and are fully accredited degrees with the Spanish Ministry of Education and throughout Europe. So this means that students can return to North America or continue their international career after their studies and successfully find employment or continue their education with a master degree here in the US, Canada, or anywhere else in the world. Uh, we are also recognized by various organizations, as you can see on the screen, focus on different areas of study, and for example, the first one, just to kind of give you an idea of what some of these are, is the Association of Professional Schools of International Affairs. And IE is one of the only 39 APSIA members alongside universities like Columbia, Georgetown, Harvard, and Princeton. Our bachelor degrees are four years long and our programs are listed here so you can take a quick look. Students apply directly into their bachelor of study and learn through an approach which combines theory with practical learning. We focus on an experiential learning approach and most students take part in internships and international exchanges throughout their studies. Programs are extremely career focused and classes are no more than th uh, about 60 students, usually 50 to 60 students. We also have exciting program partnerships such as with Northwestern University and King's College London for law. Um, and also uh, our business administration degree offers a dual degree option with China University Hong Kong or students admitted to the Bachelor of Business can apply for the Future Leader dual degree program with Peking University in China. Lastly, the very last program I'd like to highlight quickly is our Bachelor in International Relations because the curriculum was designed in partnership with the United Nations um, System Staff College, which has added amazing opportunities for students to participate in UN speaker series, competitions, um, collaborate with UN partners for capstone projects, receive personalized mentoring, and much more. Uh, our focus on this career training and experiences really allow for our students to report about 95% uh, are employed within six months of graduation for a few years now. And we also offer several different dual degree options. Our dual degrees combine two different bachelors, so you receive these two degrees in five years. Our dual degrees are challenging, but very rewarding ways to specialize in two different but converging focused areas of study. So you can see all of the currently offered combinations here on the screen, and if you want any uh, further details, I'm happy to provide those. Uh, we also offer a junior advisory board and summer program our junior advisory board is for grade 11 students to come to Spain to participate. Uh, this is a highly selective program, so I definitely encourage any students who are going to be in 11th grade next year to uh, apply in the spring. And we also have a summer program for students who are in 10th and 11th grades. And 
in normal times, uh, this allows students to kind of go to our campus in Segovia and Madrid and get a little taste of what it would be like to study at IE and also be with students from all around the world as well. And again, all of these programs are in English. Uh, quickly about our students at IE, uh, we have 75% of our students are actually international students coming from outside of Spain, and there are more than 130 different nationalities on campus. So students not only make friends on all corners of the globe, but they also expand their mindsets by studying alongside students from different nationalities, backgrounds, etc. And these classmates later become lifelong friends and international professional contacts. Uh, we, we currently have 4,100 students on campus split between the campus in Segovia and in Madrid. And in recent years, the percentage of students coming from North America has been hovering around 10% each year. So next on to our campuses. Our campus in Segovia is in a beautiful building from 1218, which is kind of crazy when you think about it, but it's now a protected site. Segovia was actually added to UNESCO's World Heritage List in 1985, and it's about an hour and a half drive from Madrid or 20 minutes by high-speed train. Actually, in Spain, you'll find a lot of different uh, great options to travel to in high-speed train. And in contrast, our campuses in Madrid uh, put you in the middle of an urban environment in Spain's capital city. So it would be more similar to maybe an urban campus you might be familiar with in New York City. And our Madrid, our new Madrid campus, which you see here on the screen, is actually 35 stories high, and it's located in Madrid's financial district. I'd be happy to share this video since we don't have time to play it today, but I'd be happy to share this with you in the chat or with anyone uh, joining the session today. So uh, next, just to kind of share a little bit more about the different opportunities students have at IE. Students are able to build their own path at IE through diff different various opportunities, and I listed four of them here. So students can choose from electives and advanced seminars. More than half of our students participate in an international exchange in their third or fourth year, and one of our more than 160 different international exchange partners. So some partners in the Northeast, to give you an idea, are Cornell, Babson, Northeastern, and Parsons. Students are also encouraged to take part in internships and international competitions. And our IE labs are internship level opportunities for first and second year students. These labs are fully tutored by a professor and students work on real company and organization projects in areas such as tech, social impact, law, et cetera. And we even have a startup lab where students can create and develop their own business. Okay, so quickly into how students can apply if they're interested in IE. Our admissions process is 100% online right now, and we have rolling admissions, so there are no oh, hello, everyone. Advice. Oh, Cora, are you back? Yes. Could you not oh, hear me for a minute? There was a little bit of a, yeah, a little pause in her freeze oh. there. I'm so glad you're back. Oh, sorry about that. I don't know what's <laughs> happening, but yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so just to kind of continue for the admissions process, um, you know, we do have a holistic approach. So students fill out their online application on our website or on the Common App. They upload all the documents there. Um, and then students also submit a test score. However, we are offering our IE test in lieu of the SAT or ACT, since we definitely understand that many students are choosing not to take those tests right now. Our IE admissions test is very different from the SAT or ACT. It's free of charge and it takes about an hour and a half to complete, two hours. Um, and the last step is actually the personal interview. During the entire admissions process, a member of the IE team in North America is going to be there for your point of contact and to assist you. And you'll also be assigned an admissions advisor once you've submitted the application. Super quickly, and I, and I want to wrap up here so we can get to the questions. Um, we do offer over 20 different scholarships at IE. Most of them are based on need and merit and can cover up to 100% of tuition, the average range would be 20 to 40% of scholarship on tuition. Something to keep in mind is that our scholarship opportunities and tuition costs are the same for all students, no matter where they are applying from. And Spain has some of the most affordable costs of living in Western Europe. So students find is often more affordable than studying locally in the US, especially if they're looking at private or out of state universities. And with that, I will turn the floor over to the yes, questions. Thanks. And thank you all so much for listening. Yes, great. Thank you so much, Cora. I'm so glad we made it through um, the whole presentation. Okay, so I know we are running close to our end time, but I want to make sure that we can get the IE information in the chat and uh, that all of our attendees have a chance to grab all that chat info. So I would like to invite each of our representatives to come back on camera. And I believe that we can still do this efficiently, um, even if it takes us an extra minute um, or two. So I would love to hear from each of you a very quick top tip of advice that you have for these students that are um, starting off on this college search or these families. So um, to just give a quick top tip to remember, and we're gonna go in the exact same order that we presented. So we'll start with Jay at Glasgow and go all the way through. When the person ahead of you finishes, just turn on your mic and answer and we'll go from there. 
Yeah, uh, I would say probably the best piece of advice is just, you know, I think having your list of non-negotiables is the most important thing. So when I was looking at schools and you'll be looking at a bunch of schools, you'll get tons of schools. They'll start to all look the same. And, you know, you'll like one in Indiana and you'll like one in California, you'll like one in Scotland, and those are not all the same things, right? So I think the most important thing is have your two or three most important things you really, really want in a school, whether you want, you know, college football program, whether you want, you know, to be international, whether you want, um, you know, fraternities and sororities, whatever it is that is finally important to you, have your list of things that's very important to you because once you stick to that list, you'll be able to knock out some of the schools that might not have all three of those things that you're looking for. And um, my piece of advice is to um, keep your options open and um, try to keep going abroad within those options. So um, we've talked a lot about full degree, but um, a, a lot of us completely understand that that may not be a great option for you right now. A lot of us have those single semester study abroad opportunities or even master's programs that you could apply for. Um, and it's, it's just a great opportunity to um, really grow. So um, keep, it, keep, keep your option open um, when it comes to being abroad. Yeah, and mine is similar. It's to keep your options open in what you're looking to study. So when you're looking at programs to choose from, think about what you're interested in, what you want to do, and just don't limit yourself to one or two different things. Keep your options open to what you're looking to study and where you're looking to study. Yeah, on the same note as everyone else talking about keeping options open, I'd say, yeah, think about what you personally want to do. Take some time to reflect because sometimes it's really easy to get carried away with my mom went to this school, my friends are going to this school, my counselor told me this school is good think and find out what makes sense to you. And if the right fit for you is in another country, all the better. This is great. Um, I always like to share about sort of student agency in this process. So there are three decisions, right? Three major decisions. You decide where to apply, then admission officers decide um, if we're able to offer you admission, and then you ultimately decide where to enroll. And I think so much time is spent on the second, uh, the one of those three decisions, but you have a ton of power in this process. So be yourself um, and sort of have faith in you seeing that through. These are all great tips so far, and I definitely echo them. I guess I would just also add, you know, be yourself, we want to learn about you and what makes you unique. And also feel free to you know, reach out to us and reach out to any other um, admissions counselor or advisor you might have in other universities that you're interested in, because this is our job. I feel like sometimes students are a little bit nervous or shy to talk to us, but this is what we're here for. And we'd love to talk to you and also share more about our university. So definitely don't hesitate to reach out to us directly. Awesome. Thank you everyone for sharing. I absolutely agree with all of this of exploring, reflecting, and reaching out. And I want to echo, especially what Corey added, like all of these admissions representatives love what they do. They love answering questions. There's really nothing too small. If it's something you're wondering about, um, reach out and ask because that's how you're really going to get to know all the ins and outs. These six minute presentations are just a sneak peek. They're really short. There's so much more that all of these schools have to offer and more for you to explore. So if your curiosity is peaked, even just a little bit today, take that chat contact info, reach out, go on social media and investigate everything a little bit more because this is just a start to help you see all of these different options that are out there that you may or may not have been familiar with before today. So take advantage of those of these resources and the best resource is the admissions team for sure. They're here to guide you, they're here to answer those questions. Um, and I hope you've seen that they're friendly, they're welcoming, um, and gives, that's given you a different perspective too. All right, well, we have reached the end of our time together today. I'm so thankful to each of these representatives for taking time out to share their schools and all of the opportunities that are there, not just those facts and figures, but the passion and the energy you have for that student experience in and out of the classroom at each of your institutions. Thank you to everyone who watched. We're so glad you were here um, and were curious and wanted to learn more. When you close your window, there's going to be a link to a very quick four question survey. We would appreciate any feedback that you can provide. I promise I've seen the survey, everyone. It's really short. It's really easy. So just take a quick second. Thank you. Also, again, this is just one of many different sessions that are being hosted for Brooklyn Tech students. We hope you've signed up for more. And if you haven't, check it out because you still can join in. And in about a week's time, you'll find this session's recording as well as all the session recordings at that same website where you register, strivescan.com slash Brooklyn Tech. So again, thanks everyone for being here. Best wishes in your college search and decision. 
there are times and moments where it can definitely seem overwhelming with so much to do, but I promise it's a really fun adventure as you explore your options ahead. Thanks again and have a great day. Bye.